was popping was popping was popping welcome to get moose i'm nikki that's moose what's up moose what up y'all and on this episode we're gonna go over yes the blue check it's everywhere let's talk about how to get it uh steph curry making a lifetime deal and how much is that worth uh building and growing your audience the blueprint to that people have been asking and then there's two ways to grow your team grow your your leaders inside of the team we're going to talk about that for this or that moose how are we feeling about this episode i'm excited about the the blueprint part and and everything to do with the audience it's a it's a new world it's a new era and i feel like the growth of every business is going to live and die on on that part right there so this one should be fun let's get into this intro two kids from queens cut from a different cloth now joining forces helping you to elevate your personal brand yeah i'm talking about nikki and moose bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset the mentality the behaviors the driving force but more importantly the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most And of course, this episode is powered by Ecamm Live, the number one all-in-one streaming platform that will allow you to stream not only on Facebook, but also on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you can. It does it all and at the same time, as well as allows you to do pre-recorded videos, video isolation, audio isolation, transitions, text, whatever you need, Ecamm Live can do, drag, drop, push of a button. And we are giving 14 days uh, for free on us. If you just go to www.nickyandmoose.com slash Ecamm, that's E-C-A-M-M, and you can get your 14 days on us right now. Hello. Hello. Moose, how are we feeling? Uh, we're feeling a little tired today. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not okay. even. I'm not even going to try and sugarcoat this. Sometimes you just gotta be honest. And um, we we are feeling a little tired. We are okay. uh, ten days into the month of Ramadan, which is always an incredible month. But um, you know, I think I said on the live I was a little sick, but feeling much better now. It's just uh, you know, it's just one of them days a little bit. You know, you just gotta you gotta push through. You gotta push okay. through. Okay. Okay. Update yeah. on the on daddy life. Any updates on daddy life? Is that making you tired too? Well, I guess it's not fully responsible for it just because, you know, my schedule during Ramadan flips. So basically the way I do it is I'll stay awake throughout the night. Mm -hmm. I'll take a nap. I just take, I take naps pretty much throughout the month. I don't get like full sleep time. So it'll be a couple of, uh, four hour a bit that's my big nap four hours then okay. a couple of one to two hour naps little little quick little cat naps in between and kind of pitch my sleep together that way so my 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 answer is if it is i can't tell just because mm. i'm not really sleeping now if it was normal schedule i'm sure it would have because mm-hmm. she's up you know with the exception of some days she's up every three three hours like, feed me now, please, or I will okay. be very angry and start crying and making a lot of noise and, and wake everybody up. So, yeah, feed, feed me now. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Daddy life is good, though. Okay. Shout out to daddy life. Daddy life. Um, okay. For me, uh, I'm not tired. Okay. Uh, I take naps uh, regardless. So there's, <laughs> I don't have to wait for a specific season. I take naps, so I'm not tired. Uh, but for me, I think uh, just came back from Michigan for a really dope uh, community event inside of Deeper Than the Brand. And uh, shout out to the community because each each time everybody gets closer you know, there there's updates not only on a business side or a branding side. There's also updates on a personal side. So it really truly feels like a family. 
uh, as we get up on these tiers of the community. So I can appreciate that. I mean, like uh, people ask like, yo, Nikki, how are you? Like that is that question goes a long way, you know? So if anybody doesn't have a community, uh, build one because it's so satisfying from a impact standpoint, but also just from a personal side, like there's people who actually, if you, uh, take care of them, they'll take care of you. So, uh, shout out to deeper than the brand shout out to I2M. Um, that was, that was a really dope meet. even though we're never, I, I don't see myself doing it in Michigan again. Mm. This, this I don't blame makes you. sense. Uh, I don't blame you. When yeah. Carl was out here, I told him the same thing. I said, bro, we got we to start busting moves. And uh, Michigan, Michigan is a, it's not a, it's not a full move. So, uh, Michigan is a walk. How about that? Like Michigan is a walk. It's a long, it's not a move. dreadful walk. Yeah, yeah. It's not a move. You know what I'm saying? When you bust a move, it's like, it's a, yeah, it's just... I don't know. Like, bust a move, like, in what kind of way? Like, are we doing break dancing moves? Are we, like... I like a little salsa. You know what I'm saying? Keep okay, salsa. Okay, all yeah, right. Keep it salsa. Cruise like. I like a little uh, salsa. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted um, to go Jamaican dance hall moves. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Come on now. See, I, I can't mess with you. I can't. It's like, anytime you open up Pandora's box with Nikki, you might just end up... You just might have... <laughs> Sheesh, man. I said, I, see, I kept it... I kept it nice and clean. That's a little salsa, a little, little, you know, a little cha-cha no, no, right there. No, no, no dance no, hall? No wine? No, wine me up? No, 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 no it's The salsa is fine? No. What? Salsa, yeah, salsa, salsa smooth. Like salsa, you are you know, you both got, you got, winding your hips. You're both. Both of them. Yeah, but, but not, not borderline having children. That's, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, come on. You can't compare the two together. That's, oh that's a big difference God. right it there. No, it depends. It, there's, some, there's some salsa dancers that is like, oh, oh wow. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, the professional, so, like, extra so, people. Yeah. No, go, no, no, no. So if you're talking go. about consistency, right, mm -hmm. of what is that lesson. more? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I can see that. But there is a group of people. In the salsa community, that you look at them and you're like, you instantly have a love connection or something because this I just right appreciate here, the footwork. You know, mm. you ever watch two people dance salsa and you're like, yo, the footwork crazy. Yes. It's, yes. Th 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 it's just like wow. And then you can never, if you, especially if it's like a live band yes. with the the just everybody cruising. I don't know. To me, that's that's such a dope part of the culture, man. You got you gotta. Okay. You got to give it up. Nothing against the, you know. All, like all the, against the, Dan Tall. Yeah, yeah, I don't want <laughs> people are going to start killing me right now. Like, what you mean? You don't think the West? No, I'm not saying that about uh, none of the other cultures. I'm just saying, you know. Listen. Anyways, why, listen. How did we end up here? I, I just said bust the move. How did we? Well, I mean, bust. that's a wide open. Fine. Fine. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. It's me. It's never him. It's me. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Hilarious. It's it's always me. But Hilarious. uh let's get into this episode. So of course, let's do the what's poppin' section. And what's poppin' is uh sponsored by Deeper Than the Brand, of course, the number one content branding community that shows you how to confidently and authentically build a brand, grow a social media presence, and build digital wealth. Uh, go to deeperthanthebrand.com for more information, please and thank you. Um, yes, uh, you may have, if you are in these Instagram and Facebook streets, you may have been seeing a lot of blue checks, all right? Mm. AKA uh, people getting verified. Uh, me and Moose are actually one of them as well, okay? Hello. However, uh, how, why, uh, what is this meta verified and uh, should you get it? Okay. So, of course, we we covered when Elon, uh, I called him by his first name. Okay. But uh, when Elon Musk did that for Twitter with Twitter Blue and charge people for verification. Now, what that does 
from their end is it gives you the blue check, it helps with impersonations, and it gives you some extra features, right? Now with Meta Verified, they did a little bit different, similar, but different. One, uh, price is different, it's higher, okay? Uh, two, to get verified, you actually need some form of ID where before with Twitter, uh, it was a free for all. Anybody could get ver verified. You make a account, you get verified, right? But with Meta Verified, you need an ID. And I believe on mobile, it's $14.99 and then $11.99 if you're doing it through web and it's only through Facebook, right? It's only for Facebook, it's not for Instagram. So those are the, the price points. Now, what do you get by paying for it? Because a lot of people are going, it's funny because those people who were so upset about paying for a blue check are the same ones that are paying for a that's blue right. check. But FOMO. that's, <laughs> yeah, that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. Let's talk about some of the, the benefits of having uh, this blue check through Meta verified. So not only do you get the verification and it helps as far as those fake pages that are happening, but you also do get exclusive features for right now. It's going to be some stickers through stories and reels when it comes to, to Instagram. And then on Facebook, you get like extra hundred stars per month. Right. And they're going to continue to give more features for those who are verified. You also get direct customer support. So we all know when there's something wrong with our Facebook, with our Instagram, we can't ever reach anybody through customer service. Never. It's the most impossible thing. Well, uh, Meta said, don't worry about it. You could pay to talk to us which I still find is a little wacko, but hey, it is what it is. And then the last, the last one, and I'm not surprised, it increases your reach, right? Both platforms have been an issue when it comes to reach. Reach has been down for months. I will almost say a year, right? Maybe even more. This, I believe, was a setup for, hey, I'm, you can possibly get reach by yourself, but if you pay, we will give you the reach that you were getting before, right? Or that you should be getting in the first place. So that is what Meta Verified is. And to get to Meta, to get Meta Verified, right? Say that five times. It's very hard, but to get meta verified, all you have to do if you're in the Instagram app or Facebook app, you go into your settings, you go into account center and on there, you will be able to see meta verified. If you're not, you may still have to be on the waiting list or it may be rolling out. So don't be like, oh my God, I don't have it, but it is rolling out to everyone in the US. Australia, New Ze Zealand already has it, but it has been rolling out to the US. So if you're going to get Meta Verified or uh, planning on getting me Meta Verified or don't even care for it, let us know. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, put it in the comments, put it in the chat. If you're listening to the audio, please hit us up on social media and let us know are you going to get Meta verified? Mm. I did. I did. I went for it. You did before. <clears throat> which was, I know, which which was surprising because usually I'm like a late boomer to all of these things. Remember, remember when, um, what's it called? Ah, oh, man, Clubhouse, when Clubhouse came out. Mm -hmm. It was it was like, hey, you should join Clubhouse. I'm like, ah, I don't want to. Hey, you should, join, you should really join Clubhouse. Ah, no, nah, I don't think it's going to be relevant. All right. Hey, you should join Clubhouse. I'm like, fine, I'll join Clubhouse. Then I was like, dang, I was late to the party. I mean, granted, mm -hmm. it didn't have a super lifelong, uh, uh, you know, it didn't last that long. But still, I'm I'm telling myself now, you know, and, and just to give a word to uh, fellow introverts and air traffic controllers out there, 
your success will always be limited the more you fight change. Mm. I can almost guarantee it. Because fighting change translates into not going with new innovations and trying to hold on to what has been your traditional norm. And the world is not going to ever stop changing, especially not today. So when that thing popped up, I was like, oh, I could do it. Oh, I'm going to go. And I took counsel from, you know, remember when we had Glenn on the podcast? Yeah. I said, Glenn, what's your, what's your take on that? He said, bro, what are we talking about? I'm going to pay that. I'm yes. like, well, if, if he's going to pay it with, you know, a million followers and all the crazy stuff, it's like, what are we thinking about? Let's just go make an investment into your business and make it happen. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm proud of myself on that one. I'm, I made the move. I was like, yeah, I'm going. Let's go. Let's, let's figure out the rest later. We'll, uh, very un ATC like of me, because usually mm -hmm. I'm like, and then yes. zuzu, zuzu. and there was Just no like zuzu, zuzu on this one. Yeah, no, that's oh. how you usually, you know, got to talk it out. But there was no, there was no, uh, <laughs> no okay. planning on this one. Oh man, good stuff. Good stuff. Right. No, that's that's what's, incredible. What's going on on the business side? Well, listen, man, um, Steph Curry signs a new lifetime deal with Under Armour. Now, this is pretty impre incredible, right? Because when you think about lifetime deals, uh, you immediately, especially in the sports world, you have to think about LeBron and Nike. Now, although no specific numerical values have been shared publicly, just if you run a comparison and you think back to LeBron's deal, there wasn't any information shared on that deal, but it was estimated to be over $1 billion in total value because it was going to be something that extends beyond his playing career. And that's the case here with Steph Curry. So this is pretty unique. He's put out a signature shoe with Under Armour. Uh, he's on his 10th collection, I believe, or 10 signature shoe. And so they've been in negotiation over the past year and their agents were able to strike up a deal where equity has been a part of the deal, meaning Steph Curry is actually going to receive equity uh, as part of this lifetime deal. Now, estimates are saying that this deal alone is set to be worth more than all of his NBA earnings combined, which as of 2024 is going to be about $473 million. So this one alone is going to surpass half a billion, bare minimum, just in value. And he has equity. Now, here's the thing that I want us to think about when we partner with big brands like this. We always go back to vertical integration. We covered it last week as part of Nipsey's model. But the resources and the distribution that you gain from partnering with a big time company like that, you don't have to worry about hiring and building a team and what resources am I going to need and how do I develop and manufacture this product and how do I get that product and deal with all of the uh, shipping and legal and tax things that have to go into place to bring that product from overseas to here. And you don't have to worry about any of that. All right. So I think the beauty of some of these deals, especially when you can find a strategic partner that is in line with your values, your mission, and what you're trying to accomplish, and they're rallying behind you to support you, that's always a good deal. So Steph Curry, kudos to you, my man. Congratulations. This one, uh, we, we, we hope for nothing but the best. Another billion. As most of us minority people will say, I just want $5. I just want five. Just want five. Pass. Pass I just five. want $5. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Curry. Shout out to him. Um, but let's get into uh, the new creator of the week. Okay, mm. because we did not have one last week because of the tribute to Nipsey Hussle. Um, but this week is going to be Justin Phillips. I mean, when if you haven't seen his content, I feel like you're not on Instagram or TikTok. I just, that's how I feel. He is the co-founder of Support Black Colleges, but he is now pretty much known as like the e-commerce monster. I mean... He is helping thousands of people to start their own clothing brand, streetwear, 
toy brand, hat brand, uh, sneaker brand, doesn't matter. He's helping you uh, and giving out every single secret that is out there for free on social media, right? He's breaking down the vendors of Nike, Adidas, Supreme, uh, some, of, some of your favorite toy companies like Cause, like the artistic ones, aka I like it, okay? Um, favorite hat companies like New Era, right? So Justin's been doing his thing, and I found a clip that was really, really fire that I wish we could speak more. Maybe in the after show we can, but just to highlight some of the content that uh, that he does and how dope he is. So let's go into it. I had 30 employees at one time. We started running out of money in the business. There was $12,000 in the business bank account and payroll was $12,600. Pulled $600 out of my own personal bank account, put it into the payroll, everybody's paid. And I immediately called a meeting in the back of the warehouse. Hey, everybody, we are out of money. So if you stick around, it's solely because you believe in us and you believe in the vision. If not, I don't blame you because we don't have money to pay. We went from 30 employees to three. I went home that night, felt so weak, bro, because it was like, like he failed at this thing that was once so good. And then I just sat down and I thought about it like, damn, if I didn't have this business, what do I have? I have the character traits that I developed. I have the relationships that I built. And that's all that mattered because I realized that the, the goal while we're building business is who you become as you build it, not the fruits that come from it. And that's just a sample of some of just the fire content that he drops. So uh, shout out to Justin. Go follow him everywhere at Justin P. That's P for like Paul. All right. He's everywhere, but I believe mainly TikTok and, and Instagram, especially if you're trying to come out with a new clothing brand, anything that would need some type of vendors. I've been on it because we're creating, create pressure, but uh, yeah, shout out to Justin. Fire. 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 Yeah, I've seen some of his stuff and I'm like, my goodness, how do you know where Drake is manufacturing his products from? That's bananas. And he's just sharing that publicly online for free, man. That's incredible. Yes, yeah, super dope. But that's just the power of serving. I mean, his his following has skyrocketed just because he's like literally giving out the full game. So, yeah, shout out to Justin. But it's blueprint time. <laughs> Man, so uh, let's let's start off with something that everybody has to concentrate on, which is building and growing an audience, right? Now, with the way that we've been doing the podcast, we have to look at it from a standpoint of what can we learn from the greats? What can we learn from some of these top influencers of how they build their fan base, how have they built their clientele up, right? And there's two things that continuously start to pop up, right? And of course, um, we've covered Master P before, uh, I would say two years ago from episode 15, right? But he had this new, uh, new interview with Ed Milet, which is super, super fire. But when we're talking about growing and, and building our audience, there are two things that pop up, which is the process and ownership, right? Process and ownership. When we're talking about Master P, in this latest interview, he's talking about the process, right? The process and, and how I like to say it, the power of one. And would love to, for you guys to listen to it, to watch it, and and see how it applies to how you grow and build your brand and your audience. One guy, I'm singing my song, Body Body. One guy jumping up, I don't know if he's drunk or what. <laughs> this guy jamming, I said, I walk off the stage, 30,000 people, and walk to this guy and give him a No Limit t-shirt. I said, you like that? He said, man, I love it. So my brother's standing next to me. He said, man, why are you so happy? I said, I got one. He said, got one of them. I said, a fan. I said, I'm gonna turn that into a million. He said, yeah, right. I turned that, we didn't sold over 100 million records independently. How many we gonna sell? I never looked at it like that. I love the process. I'm gonna get out here and work it, create this. Cause I told you, wealth is, cre is created by ideas. 
So I created something I'm happy with it. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to go put it to the world. And then I'm not going to say, oh, we're going to sell a billion of these. No, I want to sell one first. That's incredible. I love that line. Wealth is created by ideas. I felt like that's that's something that would resonate with you right there. That's oh, that's that's your thing. Absolutely. <laughs> that's your thing. That's your thing. No, that's fire. And and it's 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 so true, man. I mean, I think it's so easy to get caught up in the importance of a lot of people, you know, and you'll start to see if you actually go back through some of our previous episodes, we've talked about you might underestimate a thousand followers because they're not all in one physical space or one physical room with you. But if you think about it, if you were to get all 1,000 of those people to be in one room with you, could you serve them to the best of your ability? Would you still think that wasn't a lot of people? If you had 1,000 people show up to your first event, would you think that that wasn't a lot of people? And so when you start to think about that mentality or think about it through that perspective, the way you move, the way you build with people online changes because you realize that it's those one-by-one -one interactions that will start to group larger audiences or a customer base or a community of loyal customers of yours in, in, in a designated platform, on a designated platform or for your business or wherever the, you know, wherever the, the case may be. So got to think about it that way, man. It's not just the numbers of hundreds of thousands of followers. That's, that's feel good metrics. That's not real tangible business metrics. At the end of the day, we know that out of even a couple hundred thousand followers, you're not going to have a couple of hundred thousand customers, mm -hmm. right? Not at least not not just every one of those is going to be your customers. And so, at the end of the day, if you can build a community of that one or ten, I, and sometimes I think it can really start with ten. If you can get ten loyal people to rally behind you, which start by one, by the way, you don't just go from zero to ten. Like, oh I, no, it's one, then two, and the, right. right? You get yourself to ten. You could, before you know it, have a strong customer base because they're doing that talking on your behalf. Like they are that word of mouth marketing, which we know is probably the most effective, honestly, because someone is speaking on your behalf and giving their story and their transformation and their belief in your product or service. And they're usually able to convince who else is listening to also at least pay attention. And that's what you want. That's what you want from, that's what you, you want your brand to do, right? You want your brand to get people to pay attention, to start to know what you're about, because even if they don't need what you have to sell in this particular season, when they do, they know who to look for. Like, oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I do remember when so-and-so was telling me about Nikki and social media. The oh, yeah, that's where I'm going to go. Right. No. That's all it takes. The, the, that, and that's powerful. And the, we've covered, definitely covered this topic on the live of the power of one. But I want to focus more on... Uh, the process, right? Where we have to be realistic with, it starts with zero. Right? Mm. And because of how social media is and how we are in the comparison game, we think we jump on social media and we're instantly wanting or guaranteeing a certain amount of followers when we start our business, a certain amount of people that are going to buy our stuff, get our services, be super engaged with what we have to do. And we never really just get excited about one person. And through the process of understanding and respecting one, we get to know our audience fully. Meaning, if we look at that clip and listen to that clip of how the fan was just going crazy and and uh, Master P went down and gave him a no limit shirt. You know what? If this was done in a digital age, he could possibly DM him later and be like, yo, let me know what you thought about the show. Yo, I loved it. I'm telling everybody about it, you know. Boom, boom, boom. Tell me when you're going to be at the next one. Now you have somebody who's loyal. If we pay attention to one and, 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 and nurture them and just talk to them, 
then not only are they stuck and loyal, they also tell others. And so your expectations or your goal of having hundreds and thousands of millions starts with one. It starts with how do you treat that person? How do you cater to that person? How do you serve that person? Because some of us may want hundreds and thousands, but are we ready? Right? Or are we just skipping the process of getting ready for the audience and just getting too deep into what we're not ready for? Because we can say, and I've, I've been very vocal about how I'm a very big community person. Shout out to Deeper Than The Brand. But I started a, another community early and I thought, okay, we're, you know, we're going to put everybody in one central location and get all these people in and it's going to work out. And I didn't know how to cater to them. And it was a lesson to be like, yo, you can't just put people all in one location and you haven't even catered to one person in there. Does one person feel seen? Does one person feel heard? Do they feel safe? Right? But when I redid it, shut it down, redid it, and I concentrated on one and got that one person to say, yo, no matter whatever Nikki drops, I'm buying it. Then I concentrated on the next person. Who did she tell? Like, what was that process? Okay, cool. What got you to that point? Yo, you did this, 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 this. Bet, I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to elevate the experience. And then I got excited about not only that one person, but that fifth person, but that 10th person. Regardless of how long I've been doing it, I've been appreciative of every single person that has uh, I've come encountered with from an online situation because they're still human beings. So there's, there's a strong power of one because one will not only be loyal, but one will teach you how to nurture many. And that's something we have to like respect a little bit more and, and be appreciative a little bit more because these people don't have to follow you. These people don't have to buy, not even buy, go into your website and even see and spend time and see what you have to offer. These people don't even feel that don't have the obligation to do anything for us. They don't know us. So yeah, that's real. even with y'all, y'all listening to us, y'all watching us, we appreciate that. And we've been doing it for almost what three years now almost yep. Yep. and <clears throat> could we be like oh we should be a lot bigger why don't we have this da, da, da. no we were cool with when we had 10 10 subscribers we were cool when we had five listeners five downloads and it's been a process and it's it's not discouraging it's really exciting to see and hear from people of all over the world that we've never met before. Understand you will never meet these. Well, you've never met these people before. So there's a power of one. Very powerful one. Now, the second part of building and growing your audience and your clientele is of course we're in the social media world and we have to think about Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, that whole nine. And, and really if we are not on these social media platforms to some, we don't have a brand, but is that audience our audience or is it their audience? Now, Ryan Leslie, who we've covered before, um, has recently been on EYL again because we covered him when he was on EYL before. 
who is a uh, uh, an amazing artist and entrepreneur, he had something to say about uh, owning your audience. If you're building on social media, you're really just renting your audience. And so for me in 2013, I said, look, if I want to actually have this information, I got to give to receive. So I gave my number out on Twitter. I say, look, just send me a text if you want the record. And by that time, I'd already bought my contract out. So every single dollar that came in, it went straight to the bank account instantly. I see that's what you're doing now. And so the beauty of that, and, and this I think what you're talking about is first having that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the fans and letting them know that you're here to actually be of service to them. However, they are looking to actually support you. Shout out to Ryan Leslie, who makes me want to have a whole text community again because I missed it. Um, I look at it in, with the ownership of, of the audience. Yes, we do not own the audience. 10,000, 100,000, we don't own that. But what we have to do with social media, because some people are going to hear that and it's like, yo, then why am I building on social media? Because that's where the people are. So we have to think about building in to build out. We do have to take these free platforms and build our audience, grow our audience, understand who they are, meet them where they are and have conversations with them. It's the social part. So have the social part in your brand. But then how are we building out? How, and there's different ways to do that from how, how Ryan Leslie spoke about it as far as a text community, right? Uh, the text marketing. You have email, right? And, well, let me go back to where from the text marketing, you have platforms like Community and Superphone. When we're talking about email marketing, you're looking at like a convert kit and active campaign, right? When you're looking at building a community, maybe that's your own app, right? Or a third party platform, you're looking at like a Mighty Networks, you're looking at a Circle SO, you're looking at a Kajabi. Right? These are all things to get off social media, get your audience, get your real core audience off of it and communicating and serving them even more. Because what you have to think about when it comes to the ownership part of your audience, you're now taking them out of their comfort zone. When you are saying, hey, I'm on social media, but I need you off of it. And I need you off of it in your mind because I need to have way more control of how you know my information and what I need to give to you, right? Um, but also from a sense of, I want to serve you more. So how are you making the difference of what they get on social media from then what they get from a text messaging, from an email, and from a, a community app standpoint? So we, we have to think about that when it comes to an ownership part of the audience of, I know I need to build in, um, to build in, to build out, but then also what is the experience? What is the uh, Moose experience? What is the Nikki experience? What is the create pressure uh, experience that they're going to get? from a serving standpoint, from a brand experience standpoint, so they feel still feel catered to. Man, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Leslie is definitely, uh, still goes down in history as probably one of my favorite bars that I've ever heard. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't get what you, uh, you don't get what you're worth, you get what you negotiate. So still probably one of my favorite bars ever, ever. But that that's was like, a Jay-Z bar. I know, but it's just, I've heard it from him and I, I, I don't know why it just resonated. I'm just like, dang it. That's like, that's so like, uh, that's like E and the guru story. Right, it's right, like, right. Like he becomes known for that. Right, right, right. it's not, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. 
fire. <laughs> no, but but this is so critical. And he low key gave a mini kind of blueprint, you know, to to how to do that, right? And and it, just to add a little context to what you said, when we talk about renting the audience, really what we're saying is that you don't own their data and you don't have direct contact to them at your disposal, right? right. Like you can say, and we know this now because of the algorithm, you can share, but not all of your followers will see your posts. You know, we had some guests on here that said that you even run ads because you want all of your followers to see it, which is crazy, right? It's like, wait, mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if if that ever resonated with you and maybe even some of the listeners the same way, but in my mind, you only, uh, previously, you only run ads to get to more customers. But that approach of, no, you actually sometimes have to run ads to make sure all of your audience, all of your people see your stuff. Yeah. That changes the game a little bit. And that's furthermore proof why we say you're renting that audience. But the idea is to get them off into a centralized platform or another place where you can have communication with them. But notice he says, first, you got to start with a one-on-one -on -one relationship. We go back to the power of one, right? Mm -hmm. You got to establish that rapport with them when they're like, yo, this person is cool. I would actually be their friend. Mm -hmm. Or I want to, you know, like that desire to want to connect with you on a deeper level, you should be thinking and asking yourself, how in my brand or business can I create a, a, a feel or an experience that makes someone want to be my friend? Right. That's important. Why you want to, especially if you're in the online training and education space, yes, you have to be that thought leader. You have to be the expert in your space. But you also want to create some opportunities where they can see you on a humane level and say, this is a pretty cool guy or girl. Like I would actually, again, be their friend. You want to create that, that relationship with them as well. Not always speaking from above, but sometimes speaking on eye level. That's important to build that relationship. And then he tells you, be of service. Right. And, you know, you, you talked about Justin early on. So you're, you're seeing, I always say, anytime you hear things seem repetitive, that has to let you know, wait, this has got to be super important. Why are so many people saying the same thing? Why is, why is, uh, you know, Justin saying being a service and Nikki talking about the power of one and then Ryan Leslie saying one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one relationships and then masterpiece. It's like, do you think this is all a coincidence? Don't you think there's really a reasoning behind it? resonating and, and being said this way. So that's one of those things that I want people to take away from this segment, man. Like, yes, we get, we get the strategy part of it, but to your point again about the process, that one-on-one -on -one relationship and service where you're eye level with your people for them to say, okay, let's, let's go to distance. Let's, let's see what you have to offer. How else can I interact with you and engage with your brand? So those, those elements are just as equally important. These are facts. So remember, people, the two ways based off this blueprint into building and growing your brand is one, understanding the process, the power of one, and then the ownership of your audience, understanding that where we have to start with, that's not the end all be all. We have to get to a point where we get them off of it get them more into, uh, you know, a, a separate location. Also understanding the, you know, the brands totally with like, well, however we're monetizing. So are, are they buying the products? Are they getting to know us more and getting off the social media platform by buying our products, buying our services, going to our events, getting our books, things like that? Um, we have to be mindful of that building in to build out vibe. So that was the blueprint. And now it's time for this or that. And this segment is sponsored by the flight assessment, flightassessment.com. Discover your personal superpower and learn how to use your superpower to become a master communicator strengthen all your relationships and develop the self-awareness you need to fulfill your highest potential go to flightassessment.com moose what are we talking about in this and that yeah this one's powerful man i was watching uh an interview of justin owens and neo and he was talking about the different ways that you develop a team 
And so I'm listening and I'm like, okay, hold on. This is interesting because he really gives you two sides of the story around one side of it. You're helping people to grow. Like you're literally putting them in your quote unquote G League or minor league system and in the farm system and you're developing them to one day be your superstar or like pro team player. Mm -hmm. The other side of it is you're just going and you're paying big bucks to get the, the star from the other team. Like, hey, you know what? I see you doing your thing. Why don't you come over here and play on my team? And so it brought me to the point of like, okay, so what's better? Develop the talent or hire the talent? Hmm. There's, two, there's two ways you can grow up a team in a business. You can attract leaders or you can develop them. Yeah. Right? And so I, I call it the, the team that you're developing, I call it like your farm team. The team that you develop, they're always going to stay with you the longest. Yeah. The, the, the if you look at like uh, LeBron, his hardest decision was leaving the team that drafted him. Right. right. But the hardest team to leave typically is that first one. Is the team that helped you to develop and grow the most. And so, how can you make your company the place that people grow the most? I want to know what Nick has to say on this one. <laughs> no, go first. Go first. <laughs> Not oh, fair. Man. You know, it's it's crazy because while I'm, I'm not even going to say what I what I truly believe in terms of the strategy part of it, because it would ruin our segment. And, and I'm not saying like I'm hiding my uh, my thought process. I'll say I'll say it at the end. How about that? OK, but I was like, I, I'll, I'll I'm end. not going to tell end. you the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll say it at the end. That's what I meant to say. I'll say it I'm going to fabricate uh, this whole segment. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to lie. I'm just going to lie this whole thing out. Uh, <laughs> but but I will say I'm at a point where. I, I'm really leaning towards attracting the talent and hiring ready talent. You know, I, I know it sounds better to say, hey, yeah, be with the people who, uh, that you helped grow. And, and it, it's a better story, right? It, it almost feels like that Hollywood underdog story that came back and looked like they were going to lose the race and boom, oh my God, look happily ever after but when you're talking about building a business when you're talking about people's time blood sweat money on the line i don't know that it's recommended to constantly make the sacrifice and go to invest the time in having to say develop uh, someone in the hopes that they grow to be what you expected. There's a lot of variables that go into that. Right. And so if you would have asked me this question a couple of years ago, I would have said, oh yeah, no, I developed the talent all day. You save a couple of dollars and they'll be the most loyal. You guys could be friends and go hang out and have lunch together. It's like you have a friend and a business partner all in one. Now, this today, I'm just like, I don't know that it's worth the time investment. Unless it happens organically, of course, no one is going to say, yeah, nah, you can't. You, you, you're hungry, you're determined, you're driven, you're talented, and you're willing to make the sacrifice to be a part of the team. And so, nah, I, I don't do that over here. No one's going to say that, right? Mm -hmm. But for the sake of the business, I'm just going to have to say, hire the people who are ready to fulfill and deliver and stop waiting. That's my take. Okay. All right. That's a good take. take. I like I like that take. I don't know if it's the honest take, the way that you just pose <laughs> this. But No, no, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry after. I just want to hear what you had to say. So I'm a little bit of both. I'm a little Yo, bit of both. That's what I was gonna say. Okay, okay, well, I'll say the truth. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I live in my Authentic self. Uh, <laughs> See, I'm, I'm over here trying to have a show, people. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I can't right, right, say right, what I'm going right. to say because then it's no, going to no. ruin the section. The section is called this or that. So I'm right, like, right, I can't right. say both. No, but, but follow me because okay, there's okay, always okay. a leaning of more of one. There's not equal for me. There's not equal. Okay, fair, fair, fair. So, okay. so I'm I'm big on... Uh, 
not wasting time, right? So for for what you said, um, yes, I I agree with that as far as stop wasting time, get the talent, invest in talent. Now, what I've realized with that is that talent knows their talent and some of them don't have time for what you need, right? And what do I mean by this? So in if you are building a brand, not one that is established, Fortune 500 kind of vibes, got right, the right. org chart all great and Gucci. I'm talking about you just got your org chart. I'm talking about you just figuring it out all the different roles and responsibilities. Some of y'all not even at that point, right? I'm, I've realized those people who have the talent don't have the time. The true dedicated time to build, right? The true uh, time to do what it takes in certain times of uncertainty, right? They know they're good, as they should. Right. We get to a point like I'm not in the building phase. I'm here to elevate. Right. Hence why you would get them, because they're going to take you to the next level. So if you're not ready for that type of talent, don't. Right. But I appreciate the drive, the openness and the enthusiasm of core people who you build into leaders. Uh, you will always hear me talk about Isaiah because of how he just thought about editing to now being uh, head of visuals for Nikki and Moose and head of visuals for my personal brand, right? Because he has a team. He went from I want to to now I have a team and the loyalty is there. The dedication is there. The time is there. Even at those times where there was nothing that was really moving. Right. He, there was no sway. There was no I'm going to look at something else or anything like that. Right. And all he wanted to know some. Yo, what are you reading? Yo, what did what did you do? What did you watch? You know, and I would share a, a a book and he'd be done in like two days, read it. Like, wait, what? I'm not, I didn't, I was just showing you what I, re I didn't know you were going to read it. He's like, chapter five is pretty good. <laughs> what? Reading more leadership books than I ever have. Right. It is the people that have the, the drive that I seek for that I see that is going to take to the next level. And when we attract, and by doing that, it shows that we build from within. So now there's other people who have certain talents within the community that's saying, hey, I got y'all, right? No problem. Because they see the growth amongst those people who started at just, hello, I'm interested. To now they've become full blown uh, front runners. And so for me, I'm going to say, you know, the, the, once again, the building within and, and turning them into the, the beast that they are, the monsters that they are in their own lane. Now, does that backfire sometimes? Absolutely. Because you, may see potential in people that aren't ready to take that spot. That's, that's a whole nother topic and that's a whole nother problem. I don't think it's a bad problem because that still means you are attracting the right people. You just haven't hit their trigger to where they open up and be like, I am that person, right? So, but there are going to be a, a time in in the business side where I'm just going to have to, yo, let me dish out this money. Uh, 
and, and get the and get the talent for this part. And let's and let's see how it rocks. Right? Let's 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 but I won't have the expectation of you have my best interests. You're just really good at what you do. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're really good at bringing in the money. You're really good at the systems. You're really good at that. But in the beginning, I believe in having that bond and that loyalty to an extent. And then once that once that's there, then I can hire those people who are just literally there for the skills. So hmm. that's why I said. I like that. Ta you people who have the talent don't have the time. That's real. That's very real. Time is a lot more limited on a on a talented person's schedule than you know someone who's up and coming or really unsure. So that's that's a really good point. But yeah, I, I have to agree. I didn't I didn't want to kind of come out the gate and mess up our this or that section. So I was like, all right, let me just play devil's advocate and pick a stance on this one. But I, I do have to say, the new strategy really is both. You know, I was actually talking with a close friend of mine uh, earlier today. And I told him one of the gaps in your business is that you don't have enough domestic talent. Like a lot of your talent is foreign. You're trying to operate in the States. And at some point you're going to grow and you, he scaled tremendously, right? Because think about being able to scale with international talent. Your mm -hmm. margins are significantly higher. Uh, you're able to get them to maybe do a little bit more work. There's a lot of benefits to it. But at the end of the day, you reach a point where you don't have enough people that are growing at the level that you're growing at. So there's a gap between leadership and the rest of the team, right. a significant gap. At the end of the day, you still want to feel as though you're running with a pack, right? Like any one of you can jump out front. And even if it's not to the greatest ability of the leader, but anyone from the pack can at least jump up and, and, and hold it down for a second, right? Like when in sports, when the head coach gets thrown out, the assistant coach can fill in and it's okay, the game can go on. Mm -hmm. So I was explaining to him, I said, dude, the gap is so significant in your team right now that you're starting to get almost uninterested and bored. And so you want to now take a step back and go younger talent that you have to pay for, but you're at a sweet spot because you now have the infrastructure to actually train and develop. And so ultimately that's the balance of both. Mm -hmm. I'm not going completely on the hopes of, I'm just hoping I get some people to come and volunteer and I don't have to pay a salary. No, that's, that's, that's very wishful thinking. And it takes a long time to build that way because there's a lot of turnover and you got to hit the lottery to really make it happen. But to get to the point where you're willing to make the investment, Hey, I'm going to go and pay because I know that, you know, that, that there's a commitment there, but at the same time, I'm not going to neglect the importance of developing talent, right? right? Because at the end of the day, you still have to grow your, you know, your team and all that. So definitely I'm with you on, on the both part. I had to, I had to kind of circle around my answer, but there, uh, there it is. But let me, let me make it clear. I'm more on the, uh, the farming one that, Justin said the the grow the leaders within grow the team within I'm more for that in this season I'll say in this season I'm more for that right now good answer good answer yeah so people uh make sure that you uh go to Apple Podcasts and listen to the after show because we got an after show that you probably didn't know about and that's okay this is why we're here to let you know so go check out the after show please leave a review of what you thought about this episode uh a rating on on spotify but a review on apple podcasts and i believe pod chaser or something to that effect and then of course we have a new audio series that drops every Friday at 6 a.m. called Creator Ave. Okay, this talks about the intersection of branding and business. And this gives you more of the how-to of what exactly to do to build this business. What exactly to do to build this brand, right? What skills do you need from the past episode of how to be a creator a creative entrepreneur? What are the two important skills that you need? And so we go through those things. So definitely go check out Creator Ave. Follow us everywhere on social media at Nikki and Moose. 
Moose, final words. Yeah, I got one this week, man. Um, very important. This one says, learning without doing is incomplete knowledge. So as much as you like to learn, try, test, apply. Again, learning without doing is incomplete knowledge.